Afternoon guys, this is David from iParts for You and uh, my friend here, Damien. Hi, I'm Damien. Uh, we're here today to uh, take apart some iPhone 13s and answer some questions uh, for you guys. So we're going to start with this one and uh, do a bit of a box opening. We have already opened an iPhone 13 and had a play um, just to see what was inside and how easily they are to repair. Um, so I'm going to pass this one over to Damien now. Thank you. So we're going to heat that phone up for a few minutes um, and I'll show you the one that we've, uh, I'll pass it over to Damien, um, that we've actually stripped apart today, uh, a little bit, show you the inside, have a little discussion about it. So um, as you can see, um, the screen's on, there's no error messages, um, we've removed the battery, we've removed the motherboard and uh, it's uh, all still working, uh, which is good. Um, we did note that uh, when we disconnected the battery and removed the motherboard, we needed to use a USB to power it back up on. Um, it, it didn't work from just a power button, so you might want to be aware of that. Um, so we're going we're gonna to heat up the uh, phone for um, around five minutes um, to take it apart. Um, it's very similar to the iPhone 12. Um, the only thing that you should note is that the front sensor flex is now mounted on the screen so if I get Damien to just tilt that phone a little bit for you so you can see um, it's actually a sensor on the, uh, the, the, the screen there rather than uh, on the previous model which had a, uh, um, a, a earpiece speaker so guys if you're just joining us now uh, this is David from my parts you and Damien uh, one of our technicians Hello. Um, we, in the room with us is uh, Rhiannon and James. Um, just to answer some of the questions, uh, Rhiannon will be putting your questions to me, um, and if I have the answers, I'll answer them. So if there's anything you guys want to know, we will try and answer. Uh, we have five iPhone 12s here. Um, today we're going to take apart two. Um, we're going to do some testing. Um, I think the main points that we're looking to identify is whether the battery boots up. Now if we swap the batteries, I've done some research already with my colleagues in America and they have done uh, some some technical uh, challenges with, with the phone and uh, they swapped the batteries over. There has been no issue with that. Uh, you do get the error message um, but uh, the phone still boots. So the phone is still fully repairable from the battery point of view. Now there is some question on whether the screen is tied to Face ID and if you swap the screen over whether Face ID will still work. So we want to test that today. We're going to understand whether that is the case or not. Okay, I think that's enough. Yep, yeah, okay. So whilst Damien's taking that apart, I'm just going to turn off this iPhone a sec. Um, and uh, we're going to take you to the screen view so you can see what's going on with the, uh, the iPhone 13 there. So Damien's removing the two uh, screws, the pentalobe screws at the bottom. Um, there is something online saying that they're using a smaller pentalobe screw. Um, this isn't the case. Um, it's the same screws as in the iPhone 12. Um, so there's, there's no change there. So we're using one of these suction tools uh, to remove it. I have seen some people using an eye slack tool to do this. Um, it's whatever you prefer. Um, there's a bit more grip for us on this whilst we're doing it. Uh, guys, if you're just uh, joining us now, um, this is David from iParts for You with Damien, one of our technicians. Uh, we're in the process of stripping down an iPhone 13 um, and uh, we're going to try and answer some of your questions today on, on what we're doing. So, so far, we've heated the phone up to um, loosen some of the uh, adhesive around the screen. Uh, we're just going to go through the process. We have stripped one phone already to make this process a little bit quicker to answer some of your questions. Um, it is a long process I'm afraid. Um, you do need to take your time with this as to not damage the screen. Um, we're using plastic pry cards um, and uh, we're going to try and take that screen up as carefully as possible as to not break it. It will take the time. Um, I guess whilst Damien's uh, taking that apart, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss some of the um, the functions on the phone, um, what's changed. Um, as you can see, uh, they've changed the camera um, and sounds slightly better. It's got some really good features on it. Um, they changed the, 
the internal look of the phone. So uh, it looks a bit more designed. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to zoom in on that for you. Um, it's very similar to the iPhone 12. Um, as we already pointed out, this sensor flex has now been put onto the screen. Um, you do need to be careful with that. There is a hidden screw in there. So if you're taking it apart, just be careful with that. Um, the batteries uh, can be swapped over from one phone to another um, and it still boots but you do need to use a USB cable to, to boot the phone um, if you if this disconnect the battery so you might want to be aware of that. Um, the phone comes apart pretty much the same as the iPhone 12 um, so you know you're not going to have any issues with that it's, it's, if you've done the iPhone 12 repair then um, that that is going to be very similar uh, to this and uh, the process. So, Damien's still struggling the way over there. It does take some time, so uh, just bear with us as we do this. But I think what we want to do is make sure that the uh, we, we want to test the face ID function on it. We need to hit it like twice in the process. It does take a few minutes. Lots of IPA, lots of patience, lots of time. Um, and. Uh, we can, we'll be able to demonstrate whether the Face ID functions work on that. So we just had a question uh, from Serge um, Singh. Does the battery sw swap effect? Sorry guys, it's the charging. Does the battery swap effect? Does the battery swap effect the charging at all? No, um, no, not at all. Um, we, we will test it uh, live on here so we can see how that affects it. Um, but as we can see, uh, if you swap the batteries over, um, you will get the on-screen notification, but the battery does work as normal. Hopefully we'll get this phone open. Hard ones to crack, I'm afraid. Is there anything anyone wants to know with the phone that's open? Has anyone got any questions with regards to that? How does the new ear speaker slash flex, flex ID, face ID flex removal? Okay, so the earpiece speaker is actually built into the 13 now so let me just open this phone for you uh, one second so if you actually look the ear speaker is here it's actually inside the phone this sensor on the screen has nothing to do with face id whatsoever everything's done from the front camera so um the the online uh, what's what's being said is um that if you swap over the screen um the face ID will no longer work because the face ID is tied with the screen. Um, I think we need to test that. It may be that Apple need to do uh, an iOS bug fix. There's some information out there that Apple intend to fix this, um, but we haven't had anything confirmed as of yet. So it might be a waiting game with that. Uh, does heat help with opening these? Yes, we have been heating it at 90 degrees uh, for around three minutes. Um, uh, with IPA um, and we haven't had any issues with screen quality it does take time to to get it open. If you disconnect the battery um, we have had a question from Jed Owen um, if you disconnect the battery you do need to boot it up with a USB cable. Hi guys David from iParts View here with Damien one of our technicians uh, we're having a room also, Rhiannon reading out the questions and James doing the filming. Um, we are opening the iPhone 13s today to do some testing for you guys and answering any questions that you may have. Um, there's uh, quite a few of us joining us. There's another question from Gary Evans. Does it get rid of the battery warning? Um, sorry guys, I can't actually read the question, so I'll get one of my know, questions. Gary wants to know, does it get rid of the battery warning if you swap the BMS flags between batteries? It's not something that we're going to be doing today. We're not going to be swapping over the BMS boards, um, obviously because it's time, and we we need to spend time on that to make sure we get that. So it's going to be followed up later on. We're, uh, the, some of the things that we are going to do um, following this video um, is we are going to swap the screen ICs over from one screen to another and see if that actually allows Face ID to work. Okay. But I think we need to test that first. So we've got the... Uh, iPhone 13 open now, this is the one that we didn't open earlier um, and we are going to disconnect the screen from it um, and the battery and disconnect the battery um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to swap the battery over for you 
um, we're going to put another battery from this phone uh, into that phone and see if um, what happens, um, whether it works, how it works, and so on. So it's just going to take the time. So I've got this battery here. So whilst uh, Damien's doing that, let's talk about the battery. So this is the iPhone 13 battery. Um, and this one here is the iPhone 12 battery. Uh, they're very, very similar. Um, they have given a bit of a bump on the battery power. Um, there's a few more uh, watt hours and the battery capacity is slightly larger. Um, they've done this to give obviously more power, more time on, on, on the phone. So there is a bit of a difference. Um, and you know, I think we'll we'll see what happens uh, in terms of working out on that. And we've got another question. Uh, wants to know, will, yeah. will the phone boot with uh, PSU? Does anything blow if using more than two ounces of that shorts? Okay, so the phone will build, uh, boot off a power supply unit. Um, it does take around eight seconds to power up, so you do need to keep, keep that power button held down. Uh, whilst you're waiting for that to boot up if you're on a PS supply unit. I do realise that there is some uh, misinformation online, um, which is, you know, we've had some comments uh, posted on various groups saying that the phone cannot boot off anything but the original battery. Um, this isn't true, um, and this is why I said the hold out, wait out until we've done our testing. I think uh, iFixit did a good job of um, pointing that out, that the batteries will actually work. Um, from one phone to the other okay. um, and that isn't an issue so um, what we're going to do uh, we're just going to plug this battery we're just going to piggyback it off the board if we can rather than remove it just to just to make life a bit quicker on, on this um, hopefully we can do it the battery is like a way to go in there's a question you got your head on the screen there, mate. so we're going to piggyback hopefully. If we can piggyback, then that's great. So guys, if you're just joining us now, yeah, you're, uh, we're here with, with uh, myself, David, and uh, Damien, one of our head technicians, uh, iParts for you. Uh, we also have Rhea in the room, and James, just reading out the questions um, that you guys are putting through to us. So just, just uh, connecting the screen up with um, piggybacking a board. Um, you okay with that, mate, if you want me to hold yeah. the screen for you? Oh, no, that's sure. just fine, yeah. I'm connecting the battery. So this is a battery from another iPhone 13, it's a genuine battery. Um, there isn't any uh, copies out there yet, um, not that quick. Uh, we're going to see if the phone boots okay off of a battery. From our earlier testing, prior to coming live on this video, we connected, uh, we disconnected the battery, removed the board. When we went to boot it back up, it wouldn't boot without having a power supply connected into it. Um, it took around eight seconds for that to power up. So I think we're gonna to have to do the same here, possibly. So, do you have the USB cable? We're just gonna uh, connect that up a second just to see if that, that turns on. Um, from what I've seen online, uh, there is no reason why that, that won't work. Um, it does take around eight seconds connected to a, another power supply. So it looks like we've got power. Yep, phone is right. booting. Okay, it's so taking this close screen so we can have a see. So we're just going to wait for that uh, phone to boot. I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there is a lot of fingerprints on these screens. Um, definitely need no good coating on that. So we're booted off of uh, a different battery here. Um, this phone's never been opened before, so uh, we're just uh, going to set that up quickly and see how we get on and see if there's a battery message. Let's connect to our network. Uh, have you guys got any questions or anything you want to you want to see or understand? Okay, so R Ricky Singh has got a question. Um, can you verify the Face ID issues? Yeah, we're working towards that. We're just doing a battery check now, um, just to see if what happens when we replace the battery. We currently have a, a battery from another iPhone 13. Um, which we are just checking to make sure it works okay, see what errors we get. As I understand, it's only a face ID, sorry, a battery error on the screen um, within the settings. So we're just going to go through that now. Got to go through all of the uh, terms and conditions. 
it's going to take some time. Hopefully it won't take too long. Okay. Well, I mean, Craig Jeff has got a question. So did the power button not work then? No, uh, the power button does not work um, if you've disconnected the battery. You have to connect it to an external power source to boot the phone up. Okay, so uh, the phone's now booted. We've got a, a message on there saying important information, unable to verify this battery is genuine. But the phone's booting. So we can see that the phone boots, but we're going to get the message. This is the same on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. Okay, so if we disconnect that battery now um, and connect the original battery, um, so we're just going to do that now. Just disconnect that, connect the original battery back up. We're just going to show that Face ID works on this phone prior to swapping the screen over. So we're just going to do our first test. Whilst Damien's doing that, I'm just going to disconnect the screen from this iPhone 13. So I'm trying to do the screen, right? Uh, we're going to test Face ID on it okay. first, just to make sure it's working. Um, can you do me a favour, mate? Can you not connect the sensor flex? Okay. Um, what I want to do is I'm just going to test uh, something that was brought to me online, um, that the, f the sensor flex does not affect Face ID whatsoever. So the sensor flex is disconnected. Oh, not on the front So we're just going to disconnect the front sensor flex, just to show you that Face ID still works as normal um, without uh, being connected um, because someone asked earlier on whether if the, if you need to change the front sensor flex um, then it's fine. I don't know if you guys noticed that then but the original battery um, was connected to this and it booted up with the power button. When we used the second battery it needed to be powered up with a, with a separate power cable. So we're just going to show you face ID and see if it's working. going to find it in the settings there. There we go, set up face ID. Right, so Damon's got his face in it and we're just going to, do, we've got no question. The sensor is the sensor flex hooked up to. So the sensor flex, let me just come in here. The sensor's connected up to here. Um, this is actually on the screen here. So this is, this is the front sensor flex. So as you can see on the other phone, the face ID works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to and that's without the sensor flex connected. So we're going to disconnect that screen and connect this uh, second iPhone 13 screen um, in the same way without the sensor flex. It doesn't make a difference um, just to see if Face ID works on this screen. Jed Hill wants to know, uh, so battery swap requires a power cable. Does powering off the device with the swap battery then require usage of the cable again or is it just a one-time thing? So if you're using a battery from another iPhone 13, um, you will need the power supply cable to, um, or a USB cable to power that, that, that phone up. If you're using the original battery, it, tends, it's, it does seem that it's working. Um, what we did work out earlier though, when using the same battery, if the motherboard was taken out of the phone uh, without the USB cable, that phone won't boot. So just going to wait for this phone to boot up now. So this is with another screen on it. We will just see if Face ID is working and no sensors plugged in. We will plug the sensor in and just see if it makes a difference to that Face ID. Danny wants to know, with a new battery, do you need to always plug in the USB cable to power it up if the iPhone has been turned off? Yes, you do. So yes, have a look at that. You'll see if Face ID now works. Damon's having some trouble working the app. We are Android users, so we're still learning this. So, uh, yes, go through this. So, as you can see, Face ID does not work. So, yes, turn this uh, phone off um, and just plug that sensor flex in and, and see, if, see if we can see if it works. Now, there is some speculation that Apple will update this uh, in their later iOS update and will allow Face ID to work. Uh, obviously, we're gonna have to wait and see and see if it happens. Um, we're gonna do some testing. So after this, after this video, um, we are gonna do some IC swaps from one screen to another and see if, if we swap the IC, whether the Face ID will work on a new screen. Uh, we do have a question from the tech shop. Uh, what sensor flex and front 
Uh, sorry, Why does Sensor Jinx. Flex for the front actually look up to? Is it needed for anything? Um, so the front sensor flex is obviously the proximity sensor flex, so if you put the phone over your ear, um, it's going to make the screen go black when you're on a phone call. Um, it connects up directly up to the logic board, and uh, that's what it's controlling. Uh, hi guys, if you're just joining us, this is David from iParts for You, uh, with Damien, one of our technicians. We're just doing a Q&A session on the iPhone 13. We have taken two phones apart, we have phone, five of the phones here, um, we're just trying to understand whether uh, we can work with Face ID um, when we do a screen swap. So we've done a screen swap and uh, it doesn't appear that the Face ID works. Um, I think what we're going to do uh, following this Q&A session is do some IC swaps and see if we can get the Face ID to work on another screen. Um, I think that would be the way to go. Obviously as you know on the iPhone 11 and some of the OLEDs a lot of people now are changing the ICs over to keep the customer data. Um, and I think that's probably the way we're going to have to go. Um, so we've done the Face ID. It doesn't work when you swap the screen. Um, should we try swapping the motherboard over and see? Yeah, I think from that's one phone to another. So we're going to we're going to take the motherboard out of one phone and switch it with the other and see if we get any issues um, with uh, any of the other modules, such as the camera, such as the front face camera. Uh, the earpiece speaker, the loudspeaker, yes do some tests and see where we are with that. I know there's been some um, online uh, videos already released on this but what we're trying to do is answer some of your questions that you've got about these phones. Um, if we can understand this. Um, I will add when these um, screens go back in they do stick really really well. Um, so just be cautious of that. The adhesive they've used is uh, a little bit different to the previous iPhones by the looks of it. It's uh, much thicker um, and sticks really, really well. So for those guys that missed out earlier, um, we compared the iPhone 13 screen with the iPhone 12 screen. Um, so just to give you a comparison, just to sort of understand what's actually changed on the screen. So on the iPhone 12 um, they had a separate touch layer which allowed us to refurb the screen um, down to the touch layer if the touch layer broke. So there's two cables for that to happen. On the iPhone 13 they've switched to one cable so your digitizer is built into that OLED layer. Um, I think that's quite important to know. The screen is noticeably thinner as well. Um, they've definitely tried to make it as thin as possible. They've also built in the sensor flex actually on the screen here, um, which obviously wasn't the same on the on the previous screen. It was a separate EAP speaker put over here with the camera built in. Um, now, obviously, that's a, a slight change. Um, the display IC that you'd want to be changing is this one here. Um, so we're going to look at changing that, and uh, we're not going to do that today, of course, because that's going to take some time. We want to make sure we get that right, and we want to make sure to see if the face ID will work if we swap that IC over. Um, we also did a comparison on, on battery sizes. Um, so from the iPhone 13 uh, to the iPhone 12, um, it's slightly bigger. Do you have a question about the proximity sensor flex again? Uh, James Therese, uh, openly. Craig says, uh, that's the proximity sensor flex, right? So on the screen is the proximity sensor flex, uh, which is right here. Okay, so it is now built onto the screen, it's stuck on, um, I'm not looking forward to removing it off the screen, I'll be honest, it looks uh, very terrible. I think Apple love making these uh, harder to do, so the IPA and a little bit of heat, I think that will come off okay. Uh, we also took a look inside the phone, um, so what have you got? So inside the iPhone 13. Sorry if it's not that clear, guys, we're just zooming in on that and focusing in. So you've got the cameras. Um, you'll notice that they're a lot larger than the previous models, and they put one, uh, or they put them on a diagonal rather than straight. Um, you've got your earpiece speaker flex, uh, earpiece speaker built into the rear chassis now. Um, so I don't know if we can. Sorry, just showing you a bit better, please, guys. Yeah, can you see that? So the earpiece speaker is now in the frame; it's not on the screen anymore. 
Um, so that's a new feature. Uh, we've got, they've made it, it looks more like they spent a lot of time on the inside of the phone. The, uh, you know, for a designer's eye, it looks uh, a lot different, um, a lot nicer, especially adding to the A15 Bionic chip there. Um, the Taptic engine is now made more square. Okay, so going back to Damien, um, Damien has um, now removed uh, the, the board. Um, you have the other logic board? It's in the hole. Okay, there we go. Let's have that one. So we're just going to take out the other thing. We're just going to swap those boards over and see what happens with, uh, with that. So many flex cables. Takes a while. Is there any other questions that anyone's got about the, uh, the phone? So we just had a question from Neil Ward. Neil Ward wants to know, although the power button doesn't allow you to turn the device on after battery swap, does the sleep function still work? Yes, the sleep function works as normal um, after the uh, battery has been changed. Uh, the phone charges uh, as well normally once the battery has been changed. Nothing is changed by that. We did a bit of testing earlier. Um, so that, that isn't an issue. I think the major one uh, for re third party repair is whether Face ID will work. Um, and I think the short term answer is if you do an IC swap on the display, uh, it will work. Uh, is the sensor flex removable uh, from Alan Lee? Uh, yes, the sensor flex is removable from the screen. Um, there is three screws and uh, a lot of patience. Um, so I'm going to zoom in on it again. I don't know how much you can see, so I'm just going to come down a little bit here. I'm going to try and focus in on it. So there's three screws here, one, two, and three. So you remove that plate, and the flex cable is stuck onto the back of the OLED screen. Um, a little bit of heat, a little bit of IPA, and that should come off. Just take your time with it, but it is definitely removable. Uh, we will do some further testing just to see what happens. Craig Jessup asks, does the, does the proximity sensor on the flex have any ICs? Do you think they'll be serialized? Um, yes, it does have a small IC. I do not know if it's serialized. We will check it, but it's not going to be something we're going to do today. Um, we're going to try and get to see what happens when we do a, a board swap and see what issues are presented from that. Um, we will do some more testing and we are going to do a full teardown on how this phone comes apart with a picture guide um, to help you guys out when, when you're repairing these later on. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to answer as many of your questions as possible. Um, I, it's, it's very much like the iPhone 13 in terms of coming apart. John Wesson wants to know, have you tried to transfer the flex or just leave it plugged in? Uh, we've tried the, so the phone boots and works fine uh, without sensor flex. Obviously we haven't tried a phone call so I think that would be the next phase. We'd have to try phone calls and see what happens when, when you make a phone call, whether the screen just goes black or whether it works as normal. Um, obviously, it's not going to switch off if, you, if, if, you, if it's disconnected. Um, we will try separately removing that flex at a later date and record our outgoings, and so you can, you can look at that online to see what happens if you swap that flex over. Um, but we will confirm later on whether that flex is tied to the board and whether that causes an issue. Okay, Okay. so we have uh, swapped over the, the logic board on the iPhone 13 now, um, so let's see what happens when we boot that up. So interestingly, uh, the phone booted up without... Without power. Yeah, it seems um, like it's like very random for now. Yeah, okay, so we're going to have to do some, we'll do a bit of further testing on that and find out what, what goes on. So we've got a few messages. I'm not able to verify this phone has a genuine Apple camera. So it can't verify if it's got a genuine camera. Does the camera work? So we've got a few messages there. We've got uh, unable to activate Face ID on this iPhone. Um, unable to, to verify this phone has a genuine display. And, 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 a, and a camera message. So you just go over it. Let's actually see if the camera works. Let's actually do some testing on that. So lots of messages. Let's go more and clear it. Okay. Uh, John Wesson wants to know um, if uh, if it's if it's linked with the Face ID. Similar, no. Similar, if no, or different flex on the X range above. Um, sorry, mate. Which what flex? Um, 
think it's referring to the IC. Um, so let me compare. Let's go. Let's, let me just get these screens on the smart so you can see. So we got an iPhone 12 on the left, iPhone 13 on the right. Uh, we swap this IC here um, to uh, get the touch to work, um, and I believe it's this going to be this IC here that we're going to need to swap. Um, and we will do that. We will take a, a flat, uh, IC from one iPhone 13 screen and pop it on another, and see if that actually works. Um, and we'll be able to tell whether Face ID works. I think that'll give us a good understanding. I think it's going to limit. Uh, if, if Apple keep it this way, it's going to limit the amount of people that are able to do this repair. Um, but let's wait and see. Let me just remove these. We're going to go back to testing the cameras. Um, so Damien's just checking the cameras. And so front camera seems to be working okay. Um, uh, not really because you can try to create um, the, in the portrait mode the so, function that doesn't activate. Okay. So. What do we have that's working? So that's standard photo, that's portrait. What about the rear camera? How's that working out? It's similar like. So we are just going to get a little bit closer just to see if the camera's working. There we go, so the camera's working okay. So you switch between modes. Well, I'm not sure it's working great, but let's, uh, let's have a little test. Let's see. The portrait mode works because uh, it lies in the yellow um, color, so that does mean that it That's works. Working okay. yeah. so what about the long range one? Is that working okay? Okay, so the, the rear camera seems to work okay. Sorry to be quiet for a second, we're just going to go through this to test it. Right, there's another question. Craig just wants to know uh, if the wide angle camera is working. Right. Just test it. So that's wide now. Right, it's working fine. Should we check the like the face camera? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So we're just going to check the face ID a second, see if that works. seems like it doesn't work. So, no, okay. So the functions on the front facing camera um, only seem to work on one. Um, doesn't seem to be working on the other functions. Okay, um, anything else you want to check? Can we check live speaker? Live speaker works, okay. Vibration works, okay. Let's see if, how those work. Um, just going to run through some tests for you guys. Is there any more questions regarding the phone? So we've got another one here from the tech shop. Let us know if it turned on with the, with the button, perhaps the button and battery is serialised, can you see an IC on the power button? Well what's interesting is that actually we, this board is obviously from another iPhone 13 and we haven't removed the battery from this case, um, this chassis, so, and it booted up without the power unit, so I'm a little bit lost, I think we're going to have to do a little bit more research on it to find out what's causing that. Um, face ID is not working, but we'll do a test, do you want to check Face ID? Just gonna do, just gonna go back through Face ID. Obviously, we swapped the boards over, but we haven't swapped the screen over. So it'd be interesting to see if that works. No. So that does seem to be tied to the screen itself at the moment. So it is going to be an IC swap. So the loudspeaker's working okay. Haptics. Um, we do know that they switched to serialized vibration motor. So we're just going to see if that vibration works. It works. So the vibration motor still works when the board is swapped over. Um, anything else? Does anyone want us to try anything else um, on this iPhone 13 teardown Q&A session? We're here to answer your questions, guys. I want to try and be as helpful as possible. Obviously, we're going to do a lot more tests than over the, the coming days and see what happens. We'll note that the, they have moved uh, on the screen the earpiece speaker flat, um, speaker grill. It's now right at the top. And I'm assuming it's because they built the speaker into the chassis now. Seems like the ambient light sensor is not working. So the ambient light sensor is now not working when the board's changed. Yeah. Um, do you think that's down to the ambient light sensor flex? We could try the screen. Can change the screen and try it again. 
Yeah, should we do that? Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave this board in and uh, we'll we'll try uh, using that app. Gentlemen wants to know, are there any apps that use li LiDAR, LiDAR? I don't like that. It's Not kind of scanning. Mm. Okay, uh, what, like a QR code or something like that? No, it's like uh, object scanning. You can scan the object around. Oh, okay. So well, I think I, that's well we don't have, this is just a standard iPhone 13, so I don't know whether they have that as an option on there, so probably a little bit more research on it. Uh, there was a question there from Craig Jessup. Um, Craig Jessup on snow. So you think the battery BMS is what's controlling the lock button? We're going to do a bit of further testing on that. Um, I don't know the answer to that yet because we've had a bit of a mixed results with changing the battery on this. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I don't know the answer to it. I think we're going to have to do a little bit more. Um, so Damien's just found out when the screen sticks back down. It really does stick. This tape uh, is um, something new. A little bit of IPA, hopefully, to get that open without uh, breaking the screen. Um, got another question from um, Aaron Marsh. Have you uh, tried transferring the front flex uh, over, to the screen. over to the other screen? So what we're going to do now, a short while ago, the, uh, the sensor did not pick up the lights of the proximity sensor and the light flex didn't actually work so we're going to try and the screen that's got the correct sensor flex on we're just going to connect that up and see if the sensor works because if that's the case then the sensor is paired also with that board um, so we'll have to get back on that one also asks um, he says he thinks that the sensor flex is on the display as so the apple watch and it's not located in the watch the sensor flex is um, Screen mounted now, and it's uh, it is sensitive on the phone. So let's, let's have a little look, see what happens. Just turn that back on. Okay, another question from Craig. Uh, Will we be able to use Tessa tape to close these things back up? Uh, well, we get aftermarket tape for this. Um, there's two types of uh, tape on the market. There's a two ply one or a three ply one. Um, we prefer the free one. Um, we're switching all over to that. Um, I don't think Tessa actually make this tape um, for the iPhone screen. I think it's sourced from somewhere else. Um, so we won't be getting Tessa tape for that, but we will try and have a look on the market to find the best stuff to replace the screen. So we've now got the screen that works with this board. We're just going to test Face ID to see if it works. Zadali wants to know, can you show me the back of the screen and where the box is? Yeah, it's in Okay, so interesting enough, we have connected the screen over, but the board from the board matches the screen, but it doesn't match the front camera, and Face ID does not work, so it does require, obviously, the front camera to work. What we will check now to see if the sensor works, to, to, to sense the light, and see if that adjusts when we put our finger over it. Interesting, it doesn't seem to work. So, so front camera because it's maybe all related? Yes, I think so. So I don't know what that sensor does. Right, we have another question from an Ashley Lee. Ashley Lee says, someone said that the Face ID being paired to the screen is a bug and Apple will soon to change it in only time to tell. Yeah, okay, so the word on the street is that it is a bug and that they intend on resolving this. Um, obviously for third party repair we'd really like that to happen, um, however there's always an IC swap if um, they don't. Um, now obviously it does require work and a certain skill set, it is something that we're looking to run courses on, on how to replace those ICs on screens uh, to for customers. Um, it is day sessions and you'll get one-on-one uh, -on -one tuition on how to do that so if you're interested in that just message us and we can talk about that um, but it's definitely something that we need to switch to uh, for iPhone 11 and later um, it is something that everyone is going to need to need, understand and learn uh, going forward to avoid that display message um, so let's just recap on what we've done we have um, tested the battery from one phone to another the phone boots and works with it, although you do get a display message. Uh, we have 
taken one screen from one iPhone 13 to another and you cannot get Face ID to work once the screen has been swapped. We have been told that Apple are looking to resolve this with an update. We have taken a board from one iPhone 13 and put it in the other iPhone 13 to see what doesn't work. So um, there is some issues with the front facing camera in terms of some of the modes. The rear camera seems to work okay, however, because it's using a different camera, Face ID isn't working for obvious reasons. Um, is True Tone working? Oh. So we've got another question from the tech shop. The tech shop want to know, are you able to try a BMS swap to see if a different battery will work with a potentially non match button? Uh, we are able to do this, but not today. Um, it's something that we're going to look at uh, after this uh, Q&A session. Um, so we get a better idea of what's going on. It's not something we want to do live on, on, on video. And True Tone um, is working. True Tone is working. Okay. So with the screen and the board, uh, it doesn't require any of the cameras. True Tone works. Okay. So if we put the correct board back in that phone, um, it's just testing those functions again, just to make sure it's all working. Um, we're just going to put that phone back together, back to how it was with the original um, Logic board, and just run through some tests to show, it, show it's still working. Um, they are repairable, um, you just got to take your time with getting them open. There is a question from Craig Jessup. What about the third motherboard you can put in that chassis to see if it, to see if having the same battery in the chassis fixes the lock button issue? So we can, we've, we could have a separate battery to work with that, so we're, what we're going to do is, we'll do a bit more, I think there's a few questions on the battery issue. Um, that we're going to put this board, the correct board, back into the iPhone 13 and just go through that power sequence once again, just to see what's going on there. Um, try and figure out why it's not powering up. So just give us a few minutes and uh, we'll, we'll give that a go. It's a little bit uh, random at the moment, so uh, you need to understand that. Tim Fields, question. Tim wants to know, will it boot from DCPS pros? Uh, we haven't tried from probes, but it will boot from a DCPS, so I cannot see why it wouldn't boot. You do need to hold the power button down for 8 seconds. Uh, it's not instant, you do need to give it time uh, before that Apple logo shows. Is there any more questions, guys? There's quite a few of you on live at the moment. How many have you got today, James? Currently about 55, 56 people. 55 people. And you guys got any questions with regards to the iPhone 13? Any of you guys going to get the iPhone 13? We have been running a poll so far today. Um, so Re, Re in the corner is uh, just telling us about the poll that we've been running on who's going to get an iPhone 13 after this. They're nice looking phones. Um, I'm not a, 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 an Apple fan personally, I like Android, but... It looks 50-50 uh, so far. 50-50 on the uh, iPhone versus Android. Perhaps we should ask how many people are repairing these phones, iPhone 12 at the moment. <laughs> but uh, no, they are repairable. Um, it's no different to an iPhone 12, uh, if I'm honest. There is a, few, there is a hidden screw um, on one of the cables. Uh, around the sensor flex, so do be careful with that. We have another question. Uh, Craig says that he didn't mean trying a different battery, uh, I meant you chassis A and battery A on a third motherboard, motherboard C I guess. Okay, um, <laughs> we will come back to you about that Craig. Um, it's, uh, we're only going to strip the two phones today um, because we want to produce a guide on some of the other functions. Um, and we want to allow for us to make a mistake as well. We, we haven't torn any cables today. Uh, we have got a question from Donnie Danks. Well, it's no, is a beard mandatory to work at iPads beard? It is, I'm afraid. <laughs> even, <laughs> even some of the girls here have beards. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. It's fine, it's only live on the internet, don't worry about it, Dave. Some of us have tidy beards and some of us have crazy beards. <laughs> You're looking at me for! So we've got a message from Zed Ali. Zed Ali wants to know, so if you replace the screen, the Face ID doesn't work for now. 
currently, if you replace the screen, Face ID is not working. Um, however, there is rumours that Apple will do an update to resolve this. Uh, what we will do this week is swap an IC from one iPhone 13 to the other and retest that to see if that resolves it. It will solve it, I'm sure, but it's best to do that testing um, and we will we'll, we'll report our results on that, whether it's working or not. Uh, the tech shop says, I work on mostly iPhone 6, this is a bit of a culture shop all around. Yeah, so um, if I'm honest, if you can repair an iPhone 6, you can repair the later phones. Um, the iPhone 12 uh, is a little bit harder getting out of case. Um, takes Damien's re re taken apart a lot of iPhone 12s, iPhone 13s now, um, mostly 12s though. And it takes them around 5 to 10 minutes to get the screen out safely. Um, so it's not as easy or as quick as the iPhone 6, but it is entirely possible. The tape is a lot stronger. I know on the iPhone 6 they don't have tape, 6S to take them in. Um, the tape they use on the 6S, 7s and 8s uh, is a lot easier to um, separate the screen from the chassis than the 13. Richard Oldfield wants to know, is the back glass replacement the same as the iPhone 12 with the ring of magnets? Um, I can't see any magnets on this. Um, so I don't think it is, um, but it's something that we'll need to do a test on. What do you think that is there? Yeah, the parts of the bottom magnets, got, there was a silk magnet and a strip magnet. So we're using a strip, so there is a strip magnet on this, so yeah. that could be it. I think that um, may be like thinner. So it could be on the other side of this. Yeah, so that's so why we can see. So what them. we'll do, we'll, we'll take out the NFC and see if we can see what those magnets look like and come back to you, Richard. Um, another question? Jason Marsh wants to know, do you think the iPhone 14 will be purely purely wireless charging with no charge port? I don't know the answer to that, I'm afraid. I know that within Europe they have forced Apple to switch to a Type-C uh, cable. Um, I don't think Apple will do that. I think what they'll probably do to get around that is come up with um, some sort of adapter um, and switch to like a MagSafe connector. Um, and it'll be a type C to MagSafe connector probably. Um, I don't think they'll completely switch over to wireless charging if, in my opinion, but let's see what, what, what happens. And so that he says, is the Face ID flex fixed into the LCD or the phone? The Face ID is part of the front camera. It's not related to the front sensor, which is connected to the screen uh, right here in any shape zoom in on that for us. So we've gone through this a few times. Let's come over here. Sorry. The so this is the sensor flex. This is not got anything to do with the face ID. Uh, the face ID is contr is controlled completely by the front camera which is in the phone here. So this camera here it controls all your face ID and it is what appears to be linked to the screen. For face ID to work. We have another question. Roger Brearley says, How thin is the display module and the digital cal calipers compared to the 12 series? I have some. <laughs> I'm prepared. Okay, so yes, have a little look. Um, it is noticeably thinner than the iPhone 12, but that's because if we look at the iPhone 12 screen, we have a separate digitizer layer. On the iPhone 13, you don't have that. So if we're measuring the thickness of that, So with the frame, you're looking at 1.73mm. Um, I'm going to have to remove the frame to, to get a thickness on the, on the, on the OLED screen. So it's not something I can do right now because uh, that takes time, but it is something that we will, we will look at. But it's less than 1.73mm. Um, and if we compare that to the 12, that's... 1.9 so it's slightly thicker the frames thicker um, I'd like to check that but I can't get past the frame um, let's see if I can get do it here let's see if that will do it there we go right the OLED screen is 1.16 mil so this is pretty thin um, let's have a little look so do it here Okay, yeah, there we go. And the OLED on the 12 is 1.4mm, so it's a little bit thinner than that. 
I think they're going to be fun to refurb. Um, and I know that you're interested in that, Roger. What is it? Jason Mars wants to know, was it squeaky bum time when, took, when taking the screen off for the first time? Well, um, we're not iFixit, so we didn't break a screen. Um, or, or break a cable today, fortunately. <laughs> but um, someone will break a flex, I'm sure. They do, they do get damaged easily. Um, I know that uh, you want to try and avoid that if you take your time with it. They, uh, they will come out easily, um, but it is patience, IPA and heat. Any other questions? The guys thought that was funny. <laughs> uh, Craig wants to know why everyone's favourite iPhone is to work on. Uh, you, uh, Damien, myself, and Ree. Okay. Um, My favourite is iPhone X. Yeah, I was going to say iPhone X for me. Yeah. It's nice and easy to work on. Um, so to be easy. fair, Apple so don't make them very easy to work on today. What do yeah. you think, Damien? But it's so easy to take the board out, and if you like doing a lot of board repairs on iPhone X, it's so easy, just two, three screws, and you are good. You are Very easy to repair. What about you, James? You still uh, work on the iPhone 6s, aren't you? No, 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 no. I've done an iPhone 11. <laughs> I think uh, Craig's actually seen me try and fix an iPhone 11. <laughs> <laughs> um, I preferred, uh, I worked on an 8 Plus, and I, I liked work on that. That was very good. Fair enough. Yeah, definitely iPhone X for me, nice and easy, and the screens are e easy to refurb as well. Um, I think the 12s are going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, we're, we're going to be Sounds like on fun. <laughs> yeah, so fun fact, I can't make, make the um, ambilight sensor work. So we put the correct screen uh, on the correct board. Um, yeah, so this is basically the whole uh, phone. This, this is the phone put back together. Yeah. The ambient light sensor works as normal, as you would expect. Actually, it do don't work and I have no idea why. It's not working? Yeah. So okay. Sorry. Maybe I don't know the iOS software, which may be the case. So, no ambient light sensor? Yeah, it's not adapting. Okay, so we'll have to do some little bit of research on that. Um, there were some questions about the phone working. So, the Face ID works okay now. Yeah, of camera we'll works. That. Camera works as normal, and the front facing camera works as normal. As normal. Okay, so. Is there any more questions before we tie it up today? Uh, one more question from Calvin Smith. If you have the top flex disconnected, does the phone still boot? Uh, with the top flex disconnected, I'm assuming you mean the ambient light sensor flex. Uh, yes, the phone still boots with the ambient light sensor disconnected. Um, should we should check we if the home phone boots with only the screen? Yeah, should we do that? Let's uh, see what happens. Just going to take this part again. Another question from Aaron Marsh. Uh, can you try the ambulance light sensor but place your finger under the notch, not over the notch? Over, okay. Certainly okay. give that a go for you, Aaron. Let's go back to it. Okay, I'm just going to turn it back on and just try it out once more. So, uh, just to uh, recap, um, what we've done today, uh, we have stripped two iPhone 13s, uh, we've swapped one battery from another, the phone still boots but you do get an error message. We have swapped over the screens to see if the uh, screens work okay, they do work fine but uh, Face ID does stop functioning. Um, so we're going to have to do a little bit more testing to find out why and what's causing that and whether that can be changed. Right, so we got a long question from Isaac. <laughs> uh, Sorry, guys. Sneeze before we <laughs> out, so, uh, Isaac says, with Face ID not working after a screen replacement, which as mentioned is essentially linked to the screens I see, let's say hypothetically Apple doesn't fix this with the next update or they don't get pushed back by the community, do you think this will affect how aftermarket screens are supplied? What I mean is, similar to IC less, similar to IC less touch panels, you can get with refurbs. Do you see this being pushed more in the future? And do you think this become the norm when moving forward with later models? Okay, so just to answer your question, uh, we are looking at supplying screens without IC. Um, we have supplied quite a few already. 
uh, the issue is um, we want to make sure that the customers uh, understand what they're doing, which is why we're going to run courses on that um, before we offer those uh, options to customers. Um, because obviously if the IC hasn't been mounted properly, the screen won't work properly, you'll have missing areas of touch. So we are going to run uh, courses on uh, fixed, basically supplying that, that screen without an IC and fitting that IC to that phone um, and hopefully have a good understanding of that process at the end of the, the course. Um, but I do think it is going to be something that's going to be in the future where the screen can be supplied without the IC. We are definitely working towards that. We already do that for refurb screens. Um, so if you guys do want screens without IC, we can supply that. But we do want to make sure that you have a good idea of fitting those ICs first. Reese wants to know if we have one of these when we're done. Uh, Reese uh, works for iParts for you, and Reese, you cannot have uh, an iPhone 13 uh, once we've uh, played around with it. What I'd rather do is stick one of these forward screen protectors on it and smack it with a very big hammer. <laughs> and I'm sure our customers would prefer to see that than you have one. Craig wants to know are the courses uh, that we're offering going to be in person? He has family down in Newport, and we'd love to come and meet you guys. We are offering one-to-one -one courses on the IC swap. Uh, it is in person um, with Damien um, or myself uh, to go through that IC swap out. Um, we do want uh, our customers to have the knowledge to do the repairs for the future. Um, it does seem like iPhone repair is going down the IC route, so you're going to need to have that knowledge, and we're happy to work with our customers uh, on understanding that process. So. Yeah, just, just, just send us an email if, you, if you've got any questions about that or give us a call. We're always happy to help. Everyone wants to know who's, what Ree's favourite iPhone is to work on. Ree has never worked on an iPhone or done anything technical uh, in their life and I don't even own an iPhone. That's the answer. <laughs> so, just to make sure you got that with a little bit of a recap. Um, Ree is, uh, works uh, on the marketing side of things. Um, she doesn't work on the technical side of things. Um, she is building her knowledge on it, but she doesn't repair iPhones at the moment. So we are working towards training our staff on every element of repair, but it's a big process. Um, okay, you, so you guys got, have been doing it for quite a few years. Dane's got something to say. Yeah, we have the iPhone and only screen is connected and the battery and the power button, of course. So the phone has booted. Interestingly enough, I think we have to do a bit more testing on this. It's, it's very random, very random. Our button is connected, so. So the screen is very dull, um, and I'm assuming this because one of the sensors is not connected. Probably something to do with, okay, so the screen's now turned up, so that's now working. Um, any error messages? So no error messages when nothing is connected apart from the battery and the screen and the power button, which is interesting. What happens if you go into the um, into the camera module? Um, obviously nothing, but no error message. So interesting. Right, guys, if you're just joining us now, it's uh, this is David from iParts for you with uh, Damien, one of our technicians. Um, we are going through an iPhone 13 teardown, answering any questions that customers have got. Uh, just to recap, uh, we have done quite a bit here today. So we have taken um, a battery from one iPhone 13 and put it in the other, um, which boots but with the error message. Um, we have swapped a screen over from one phone to the other and uh, I can confirm Face ID does not work with uh, a screen not from that phone. It's likely that it's paired with the IC, so it's uh, a case of swapping the IC over um, and or Apple. Um, may uh, do an update to fix this, but we don't know just yet. Um, we have swapped the motherboard over from one phone to the other um, to see what error messages we get. We do get three error messages. Uh, we're not using the original screen, not the original battery, and also not the original cameras. Um, we do get error messages on those three things, um, so you might want to be aware of that. We have another question. I think everyone wants to know, do you have to code any of the newer phone screens? No. Um, so from the iPhone 11 onwards, uh, 
Apple changed technology from EEPROM to ROM. Um, there is no ability to read that data um, on those screens and program them um, correctly for that to work. So, uh, yeah, it, it's not possible at this time to program a EEPROM chip. So you would need to transfer that IC over uh, at the moment um, until there is an ability to do it. As I understand it, they're taking that information from the secure enclave on the phone. Um, and there's no programmer out there to take that for the iPhone 12 or 12 Pro or um, 12 Mini, etc. Uh, and iPhone 13 as it is. So I think it's just a, a waiting game to see what happens there. There is new stuff coming out all the time. Um, JC and Chanley have brought out uh, flexes now, which can piggyback onto uh, boards and batteries to make these things better. But uh, there's no perfect solution apart from changing the IC over on the screen at the moment. Um, right, so what have we done now, Jake? Yeah. I've connected it, it um, to the state it was before, okay. because uh, when I have the camera connect, uh, disconnected, I've seen that it shows, um, it can zoom like twice, and I didn't see that before when we have the camera connected, so I just want to double check that. Okay guys, the last few minutes of answering any questions, uh, We've been going for quite a while now, uh, trying to help you guys out, giving you as much information as possible um, on these teardowns so you've got a better understanding. Um, you know, obviously this is important for third party repairs future for Apple iPhones, so we want to try and get as much information out of here as possible. Um, we will uh, be working on uh, teardown guides and uh, videos over the coming weeks. Yes. And so. um, we will also get a bit more information on Face ID and whether the chip so solves it and we'll publish our results. So when I, I, I have the camera turned on, uh, disconnected, it was like only um, point, uh, two times. Okay. I, I had only zoom two times. Okay. And as you can see, there is no that sign of right now. Yeah, so only option I had was like zoom two times when I have the camera disconnected. It doesn't really much matter a lot but um, it may be like a uh, good point to raise to, okay yeah so uh, you know we're going to put together a, a questions uh, that we've picked up today that we haven't been able to answer and uh, we're going to try and feed back the information um, full video will be uh, published on our youtube uh, channel and uh, we'll be doing a guide on our guide site uh, which you're welcome to see um, which is uh, uh, guides.ipartsu.com and um, if you've got any questions, just give us an email, give us a call, however you want to contact us. And uh, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.